Today, we celebrate the achievement of a world record. What's up guys, welcome back to another Electric Seaport video. Today we have a very special story that's been a really long time in the making. If you're new here, my name is Mike Beard. I have built a ton of electric skateboards over the years, and I now run a DIY electric skateboard parts store. Before we dive into this world record, I want to give you guys a little bit of backstory. Uh, here at Mboards, we get tons of emails every day from people who are trying to do some kind of ridiculous things. Like, for instance, we get some emails for people who want to build electric skateboards that can go 60 to 100 miles per hour. Some people just have death witches, I guess. Um, some people want to build electric skateboards for less than $100. Good luck building a regular skateboard for less than $100, you know? Um, some people want to put eight motors on a board, and I'm thinking, where are eight motors going to go? Just people are kind of nuts. Well, one email caught my eye, and, and it was from an Australian filmmaker who wanted to beat the world record for longest distance traveled on an electric skateboard across the state of Texas. And I look at this email, and I'm like, hmm, that's pretty cool. But then I have to think about all the emails we get and I'm like, well, you probably just want some free parts. A lot of people message us with their special project they're doing and they just expect us to sponsor them or give them free things. And I'm just like, well, let me, uh, let me talk to him and see what he says. Well, it turns out that, you know, they're very serious, 100% serious. They have a real budget to get these boards made. They have riders already selected and they're making a full on documentary and they're determined to beat this world record. So my original thought of being a little skeptical, I went from skeptical to, okay, well, let's see what we can do. So immediately I had a couple concerns right off the bat. Um, first of all, how long is this ride gonna be? Um, how many miles are they trying to do a day? And what type of terrain are we facing? Uh, they let me know that they're trying to go a thousand kilometers or 620 miles across the state of Texas. Um, they're trying to do about 60 miles a day, and the terrain that they'll be facing ranges from nice paved streets to gravel roads. So I'm like, okay, well, it's very specific. Um, but I went, we went back and forth, I threw some ideas together, I got a nice spreadsheet of full of different parts and stuff, sent that back and forth, and we finally landed on a nice simple build that would absolutely do what they wanted it to do. So for the wheels, we went with eight inch tires over regular longboard wheels. And looking back on that now, it, uh, it was obvious we had to do that because some of the roads that they were on didn't even look like roads. So eight inch tires made sure they were gonna get through any type of terrain um, without any issues. So I'm really happy we went with those. As far as electronics go, we use nice high quality vests and the most reliable remote I could come up with. As far as the motor goes, we use a single 6374 motor, which isn't traditional for like a mountain board type build, but we were really trying to squeeze as much range out of the boards as possible, and adding a second motor can sometimes decrease your range up to 30%. So I knew the elevation change wasn't too crazy, um, so a single motor should be fine. The batteries were extremely important in the success of this world record attempt. Um, they, again, they were trying to get through 60 miles of riding every day, so we needed to make sure they could at least hit their daily goals, um, to make sure they were stayed on pace, and to make sure that they could do this um, in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so I went through and I, and I considered a bunch of different battery packs, and we ended up landing on giving each rider three 10S 4P lithium ion packs. Uh, we used Samsung 30Q cells in each of the packs. So each pack could get them about 20 miles of range, conservatively. Um, so after 20 miles of riding, they would switch from battery pack one to battery pack two and immediately throw battery pack one onto the charger in the chase vehicle. And then by the time that they finished uh, battery pack two and three, battery pack one should be done charging and they could use that as a fourth battery pack if needed. Um, and I feel like that system worked out really well. There's a lot of battery packs to kind of go between the, the two riders. The build process went pretty smoothly. I have actually never built a mountain board board before. I'm a very traditional longboard type of guy. I don't really ride on any crazy terrain, but all of the principles are pretty much the same, just scaled up. Um, there's a couple hiccups with getting some of the pulleys to align and getting everything to be perfect, but once we had all that down, the uh, the handoff went really well. Um, the boards, though, are they're not going to win any beauty contests. That's not what the goal of these boards were. They just had to be functional and they just had to work looks came second to function every time. Now there were a couple weeks between handing the boards off to the team and the world record attempt beginning. And, and during those couple weeks, I'm getting kind of nervous because you know, it's, it's, we're getting close to date, it's getting really real. 
And I'm also feeling the pressure of this entire thing rides on the performance of these boards. So I start to think about 620 miles. That's kind of on, and on average, how many miles someone might put on their board in an entire year. Um, and then I think about all the maintenance that I've done to maybe my board in the last year, you know, replacing bells, tightening motor mounts. And then we're gonna push all that maintenance into 10 days. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, what is that gonna look like? What is replacing a year's worth of belts and tightening motor mounts for an entire year? What is that gonna look like getting pushed into 10 days? Um, to clarify, I am 100% confident in these boards. I was very confident in these boards. Um, but again, you know, looking at, you know, the spec sheet per se, is different than real world use. What is actually, what is putting 600 plus miles on a board in 10 days really gonna look like? Um, so there was kind of this big, like, we'll see moment. <laughs> so the first day of the world record attempt came and went, went pretty well. Um, they met their, their mileage goals. But as the day started going, there's something became very apparent. Um, the boards that I built were not perfect. Um, be, again, we're just putting a lot of miles on them. Um, over the course of a short amount of time. But what, there was some kind of miscommunication or maybe I just didn't consider it, but when I built these boards, I was considering a rider of a similar body type to myself. I'm not very tall, I'm not very heavy. Um, one of the riders kind of matches my body type, but another rider was much taller and much more built than I am. And he was having trouble keeping up with the first rider. So there was some di huge speed differences and if the, the lead rider would just slow down to the second rider's speed. It's just gonna drag this thing on a lot longer. So we decided that we were going to send out extra motors, um, the extra vests and extra ESCs and everything that they needed to um, to add a secondary motor halfway through the, the world record attempt. Um, I FaceTimed them a couple different times to help them with the installation process, to oversee that whole thing. Um, so adding a second motor worked really well. Um, so we kind of got a plan together. We figured out, you know, we had an issue that they were having. We solved it. Um, I solved it from Vegas and sent everything out to Texas and, and it worked out really well. They were able to fix it and, and move forward. Um, that's something we should have done in the beginning, but again, we weren't sure how this was gonna go. We've never done something of this magnitude before. So despite the few minor issues they had, um, the lack of a second motor, the severe weather issues they had, they made it. They broke the world record. Uh, 1,000 kilometers, 620 miles. Um, there's actually more of a specific number. Um, you should go watch that documentary. It is out now, but anyways, they broke the world record and uh, I just couldn't be happier. Uh, there are a couple things that I would change about the boards if I could do it again. Um, instead of eight inch tires, I would go with six inch tires. Six inch tires would have just been more than enough to get through the terrain that they were experiencing. Um, but then it would have required less torque to get the boards up to speed, so maybe our taller rider would have been fine. Maybe we wouldn't have had to add a second motor. Um, but if I had to do it, if I had to do it all again, I would have added a second motor to both boards just, just to help things out. But with the budget, air, the budget restrictions, um, having a second motor and another battery to to try to offset the loss in range. We weren't really sure, we really wanted to keep the budget as, as low as we could, so a single motor is what we went with, but if I could do it all over again, I would let them know that, hey, a fourth battery and a second motor would be the way to go. But again, I wasn't sure, I had never done this before, so anyways, that's what I would, I don't, that's what I would have changed personally. So I do have to say, I learned a ton personally. Um, despite the issues that we've had, we were able to remedy them out in the field. Uh, the Lone Star Skate team was amazing to work with. They were very understanding. They were very eager to learn how to um, do the maintenance on the boards, how to, you know, just learning to ride the boards. It's crazy as these guys got on these boards for the first time and learned to ride them as the world record was starting. So it's just a huge, like, I just am amazed at, at those two guys that they were able to do this. Go watch the documentary. It's out, all the links in the description to all the Lone Star Skate social media and their documentary, it's all linked down below to a very, very well-made film. Um, Ani's, he just did a really, really good job. Um, so go watch that, it's an, it's an amazing journey they had. Um, I don't wanna give too much away, there was just a lot of, little bit of drama in there, um, but it's very, very interesting and it's, it's a good time, so definitely go check that out. I just wanna say congratulations to the Lone Star Skate team. You guys did amazing. You guys raised money for charity, you guys completed the full record. I just wanna say I couldn't be more proud of you guys. Um, and I'm so happy that I could be a part of it. So 
Guys, congratulations. You guys deserve it 100%. If you guys have any questions about the build itself, just drop a question down below. I'm very active in the comments section. If you have any questions about how it was built, why we went with, with uh, some parts over others, just let me know and uh, I will do my best to answer them. But as always, uh, subscribe. We have a lot more electric skateboard videos coming in 2020. I'm super excited to get a lot of this stuff out to you guys. Um, I've had to sit on this video for a while, but uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.